Hi. So today we are going to talk about some of the basic settings which we need to understand before starting to drive a car. Um, every time we have to make a small pre-check before we start to drive a car in the road. So usually when we start the car, we need to notice the displays. So usually there will be a start button or a start key where you put the key inside and start the car. So um, in an automatic, it is you have to press the brakes before you start the car. And if it is a manual geared car, you should plus also the clutches. It is recommended to press the clutches. And um, if it is an automatic car, then it's enough to press the brakes or else the car will not start. So this is an automatic car. So I'm just pressing the start button. Um, so you have to show the display here because I'll do it again because usually during the starting a number of lights will be going on for example now I press the start you see there are a lot of lights going on so what does this mean the basic rule is the warning light should be um, the warning lights all the warning lights should go off after a couple of seconds if they don't go off then there is a problem with that particular system so what are the warning lights here there are many lights i, I cannot um, exp i cannot see it anymore so I, can, I think i cannot explain it also but usually there are abs lights for example if they, there is a problem with the abs system then there will be a warning light which states the which will be called abs and this will be lighted on and then it means that the abs system is not working or not properly working then there will be airbag light then there will be a brake oil light um, there will be a special uh, light for maybe we can look again yeah. in a short time for example as with the tire pressure and the esp lights um, here in the middle section we have what else do we have we have some of the warning signs automatic on off and here in the left side what else do we have you can see ABS and this one is a warning sign so the basic rule is all the warning lights should go off after a couple of seconds we start the car so now we can see the one of the warning lights is still on which is actually the seat belt warning so one of the members has not worn the seat belt so it is me i want the seat belt now it is the warning light has gone off and there is an extra warning light here this doesn't usually exist in in any course i just in want to course. resume in the warning light can you unlock the seat belt yes And there is here another warning light which means that uh, the parking brake is on so usually if I pull down the parking brake then this shine should go off because you cannot drive with the parking brake on so usually there will be a manual parking brake or an electronic one it depends on the car usually there will be a lever which where you pull the parking brake so you can pull the parking brake or release the parking brake and the warning lights will go on and off so these are basically the warning lights and then we have a number of switches here in europe it is standard um, that means the switches on the left side are usually control the lights and switches on the right the switch on the right side usually control the wiper motion for the wiper rain wiper in the um so can you do it? yeah this one for we'll start with the lights i would say yeah, yeah. because um, if you come closer there are a number of symbols here which also is a very difficult I mean I, if you don't know the symbols it's it's not easy to understand but here the lights are in the automatic mode not all the cars have an automatic mode where it decides based on the light situation to switch on or off the light I keep it in automatic because it's it decides itself but usually you can put it in a low beam mode this is the low beam one and this is the uh, parking light mode where you have the minimum lights and this is the off 
so it's very clear regarding lights this switch can be usually uh, in many cars this switch is also separated here somewhere as a regulator in the underneath so you can also turn it on there and this lever is the indicator lever so if you press it to the right if you just just push it to the right then it's a right indicator you can see the blinker going on and if you push it to the left then it's a left indicator so if this indicator blinker usually um, blinks faster than a, as it should be if there is a frequency which you can see which is blinks if it blinks faster than is then it means that there is something false with the indicator system it means that the bulb could be defective or the fuse could be gone or whatever so there is also a warning system which usually all cars have built on and then for the high beams you usually need to push the lever downwards once the light is on for example now the light is on you can see the green one goes on then you can press the um, press it down now you see the blue color uh, symbol which means that the high beams are on you're not allowed to drive with high beams usually unless until you're going in the outskirts in the night where you don't have uh, enough light then you can turn the high beams on but as soon as you see any car coming in against you in a distance you have to go back to the low beam mode so that's the basic operation of lights how do you switch on uh, the high beam i see the symbol only for the low beam light. you see the symbol here this is the symbol for high beam so it, the arrow is facing downwards so if you push it down then the high beam will be on so it's pretty understandable when you play with this kind of switches usually different cars have different switches but it is in Europe it is pretty standard I would say so this this left switch will deal with all kind of uh, um, light activities and this one is here an extra button which you sh used to change the display what shown what is shown here so that is an extra feature which is which a standard car will not have and then we have the right one which is the wiper which also shows a number of symbols usually it's very easy when you this symbol can you take a closer? Yeah. this symbol mm -hmm. is the front windshield yeah and there is a another symbol for the back windshield we don't have a back here for example you can show it here here yeah. this rectangle is the back windshield and this kind of a rhombus shape an arced rhombus this kind of a shape is a, it's not a rhombus what is this uh, it's, a, it's a different shape this is the front windshield so you can see everywhere whenever there this shape is displayed then it means the front windshield not the back windshield so here it means the front windshield the speed can be adjusted from minimum to maximum for, for the wiper here it's the off condition then I have always kept it in the automatic condition because this car has a rain sensor and then the wiper goes on automatically here we have a we can keep it in a low speed and high speed etc and when you when I press it down it there is a small fountain coming off it it means thus it will wash the windshield for example if I if I press it down now the wiper goes on so I can wash the windshield when I, when I when I pull it to the back so um, these are basic wiper settings i would say in the front windshield this car doesn't have a rear windshield that's uh, that's why we don't have a switch for uh, switching on the rear windshield uh, the rear wiper sorry it has a windshield but it doesn't have a wiper um, so basically that's it so this symbol means heating on the front windshield and heating on the rear windshield um, so these are the warning so signs you need to there, notice. there should be a heating system in the windshield? This is when when the temperature difference is too high between um, outside and inside. If the outside is okay. cold and inside is warm and if you don't have an air conditioner and it, it begins to frost here. In the, uh, it means like not from the outside, from the inside also. So once you press the heater, windshield heater, then the frost will slowly go off. Oh, okay. Because sometimes the frost will start, it will start frosting while driving itself. 
so it's very difficult for to to see the see the road okay so now there are also other settings let's switch off the car and uh, talk about the other settings like how to set up my seat position correctly and how to set up the um, rear mirror correctly and the side mirrors so basically once you get in the car you need to have a comfortable position not too low not too high um, the best position is how to measure if i am sitting correctly so you have to use your right hand you have to just lean on to the back use your right hand stretch it fully and if you stretch it you have to with the full stretched arm your right hand should be on the top of the wheel then it means that you should have uh, your knuckle uh, you, you should be able to place your knuckles on the top of the wheel then it means that you will have a particular when you place the hand on the wheel then you will have a particular bend here and which is very comfortable to steer whatsoever and this is so you need to reach this seating position you can adjust all the use the, all the adjustments in the seat usually push forward backward and also you can use lean forward backward using the wheel given here so you can adjust it and regarding the height it is very important that your eyes are over the steering wheel then that's where we, we can prob probably see the road very well and usually when you're so, too tall you will be mostly like this this and you can maybe go down a little bit to come uh, to a comfortable position and that's it mostly about the sitting position when you get this sitting and you need to have enough space in between your legs and steering so that you can turn without any problems steer the wheels without any problems and the next step is adjusting once you have put your sitting position in a good manner then you can start adjusting your mirrors because once you adjust your seat then you need to readjust your mirrors always so adjusting the rear mirror is very simple just lean on to the back not go, don't go like this and adjust the mirrors lean on to your back straight sit straight and then just turn your eyes and start adjusting the mirror you need to see the full window when you're in this position because this is the comfortable position where you're going to drive you're not going to drive like this or something like that so just stay back adjust the mirrors and then stay back and usually for the side mirrors you need to adjust using the buttons or you will have a, um, a adjustment um, lever here on, on that side so for the rear mirrors it is a little bit you need to concentrate that you can see the edge of the first door handle for example I can take this onto my side and I can zoom. For example, from my eye position, I can see the first handle here. This is from the front door, and this is the back handle. And usually, I adjust it till I, when in the normal position, I just see a little bit or very a minute part of the front door handle. So that's the best position which I can have because I can see the whole road. I can see also a little bit on in the, on the bottom of the road while I'm parking because I need to see the, um, for example, from here on the right mirror, it's almost the same setting. So I can see the, um, the pavement. So while parking, it will help where uh, to see where the pavement is. And I see most part of the road and, uh, and also it covers it, it it's a very good setting to in order to calibrate how the mirrors are set so once we have also set all the mirrors then we are ready to go we can put up put the seat belts on and then actually you are ready to start driving don't forget to put the seat belts on in germany it's a must and um lights turn on the lights it's always recommended to drive with a low beam even in daytime it is not at compulsory in germany but in some countries like austria and croatia i think in slovenia etc it is compulsory so please don't forget to turn on the lights start and that's it you can drive